Inauguration Day, 1961. <laughs> Vice President Johnson's 16-year-old daughter was mesmerized, not by her father taking his oath. I don't think it'll make much difference. He's still our father. But by the new First Lady. We all wonder, what did she look like when she woke up? Uh, in the morning. Did she have a bad <laughs> hair day like the rest of us? Uh, because we always saw her looking beautiful. But this is a really nice picture. Isn't that nice? Yeah. That's More important, says Linda Bird Johnson Robb, behind the scenes, she also was kind, becoming a friend to an awkward teenager. Mrs. Kennedy was looking at me and thinking, my children are going to grow up in this environment. Mm -hmm. Here is somebody who has been doing it uh, since she was born and uh, somehow has survived. She was only 31 when she and President Kennedy came into office. And she was about as stark a contrast to her predecessor, Mamie Eisenhower, as one could imagine, says University of Virginia historian Barbara Perry. She was the third youngest first lady and had these two beguiling children. I rather love this fall. The way she spoke was different in her breathy voice. Dolly Madison managed to save it. The first time many Americans heard that distinctive voice was during her 1962 tour of the White House, showcasing its restoration. It's by Lanouillet. 56 million people watched. Jackie Kennedy may not have considered her role political, but she was a huge political asset. At home, and overseas. The crowds would yell, where's Jackie, if she wasn't there on the stage with him. The president is greeted formally by President Charles de Gaulle. Her husband famously joked about it. I am the man who accompanied Jacqueline Kennedy to Paris, and I've enjoyed it. She would tuck a bare shoulder up under the arm of an important man and then whisper in their ear. And men <laughs> just would fall at her feet. I thought of her as oh, just larger than life. People still think of her that way today. I th yes, very much so. Why do you think that is? She was young and she never aged. Because time froze in Dallas the image of her blood-stained suit symbolizing a different side to Jackie Kennedy. Somehow she put steel in our backbones that we can't go to pieces because she didn't. She was holding up the entire country and the world because the world was grieving her husband. That point was emphasized by President Johnson in a phone conversation just 10 days after the assassination. Mr. President? I just wanted you to know you were loved and by so many and so much. Oh, Mr. I'm President. one of them. There's Mrs. Kennedy in her breathy, flirty voice with Lyndon Johnson in his Texas draw flirty accent. You got the president relying on you, and this is not the first thing you had. So. So there are not many women, you know, run around with a good many presidents. you got the biggest job of your life. She ran around with two presidents. That's what they'll say about me. <laughs> it's very flirtatious. But that was the nature of those two people and part of their power in politics. There's an elusive charm to Jacqueline Kennedy, and I think that's one of the reasons that we're so fascinated. Lisa Kathleen Grady curates the First Lady's exhibit at the National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C., where Mrs. Kennedy's costume pearls still are a huge draw. These pearls went at auction for $211,000. Get out. <laughs> it, you know, it'll they're tell you fake. they're fake, and they probably cost about $300 to buy new. And in the vaults, more Kennedy memorabilia. And this is the creche in the East Room. Including the 1963 Christmas card. With best wishes for a happy new year. Never sent. This family was gone. This White House was gone. Gone in an instant. But no single instant can erase that enduring mystique. 
young girls who were not alive when Jacqueline Kennedy was first lady who come into this museum looking for this person that they are fascinated by, that they want to emulate, and that is the stuff of legend.